Issue 63. It's kind of amusing how Grimer sees Eggman immaturely throwing tomatoes at a picture of Sonic saying, I'll get you one day, and calls it your high-powered think session. That made me smile. It's a good character-defining moment for Eggman. He shows him the ultimate trooper and is told to bring him the brain scanner. You know, since Grimer is a totally new character for the Sonic continuity, it's weird that even by this point, I still haven't gotten any sort of backstory for the guy. He puts the brain scanner on the robot and says that if it works, the robot will be programmed with a copy of Eggman's brain patterns. Oh, this should go well! Yeah, this isn't gonna backfire at all! Why would they ever think this robot wouldn't betray them? If he has Eggman's mind, he'll want to conquer Mobius for himself, don't they realize that? And either he's programmed to be loyal to Eggman, and not mind being second in command, which Grimer never mentioned, and that would make him not have a perfect copy of Eggman's mind by any means, or he's lying to pretend he's on Eggman's side. Over in the Pleasant Zone, where Sonic and friends are disguised as Bob Beaky's traveling circus, I really have to wonder why none of the Freedom Fighters are assuming Tails is dead or kidnapped, by the way, since he's been gone for so many issues with no explanation. But anyways, they take off their disguises, and they get sighted in the Pleasant Zone, alerting Eggman. The Ultimate Trooper says there's no need to bother Eggman with that, as he'll handle it, and the people run away from an airship landing and sending steam everywhere. Sonic says it's good that there's trouble because it gives him a workout. He's supposed to be optimistic, but it has a darker light here considering that this is Fleetway Sonic. The airship calls out in an announcement to the citizens to surrender Sonic and they won't be harmed then. Sonic confronts the ultimate trooper, Brutus, with his friends, and a fight begins with Sonic and his friends fighting robots. Sonic gets hit away from Brutus because his armor is tough, and the story ends on a cliffhanger with lasers being shot from the robots at them. In the next story, the force field trapping the heroes is gone because it's taking all the Dark One's power to try to transform the Enchanter Kings. So that was the force field? Why'd it cause them to scream out in pain then? After they're transformed, the Dark Orb gets stolen by Knuckles who's betting that Trog used it to control the Dark One, and it reasons that once they get it back to the Nameless Zone, they'll find a way to force the Dark One, with it I presume, to release the Enchanter Kings from his magic. I really hate that Tails doesn't get to make a single smart plan, that it has to be Knuckles who hogs all the glory. Now it's nice to have Knuckles make up for lost time, but still, can't Knuckles do the fighting and leave the thinking to Tails at least? Knuckles, when they get approached by the villains, tells Tails to throw the Dark Orb over the bridge even though they were just talking about using it to make the Dark One reverse a spell. Earl's sister explains that because this is a dimensional bridge, they're above non-existent space, so anything that falls from the bridge ceases to exist. And that very thing happens to be the Dark One. I'm assuming that will magically fix everything because the magic works on he has to be breathing to keep his spell going logic. Even though you think inertia would apply to magic spells too, I don't know. And of course I was right. And predictably again, Trog wasn't brought back to normal, and just says he'll destroy them all as the story arc ends on yet another cliffhanger. I prefer if the story continued and ended itself in this issue, but instead we go on to a no doubt pointless story about Shortviews, who saves some civilians from being turned into badniks despite being hit with a laser at one point, as usual. After Shortviews recaps his entire backstory to us because the executives think the audience are goldfish, Although, since I already knew he was going to recap and nothing but, I calmly skipped past and didn't care. Since recap doesn't really matter if it's made obvious that it's coming, and will be exclusive to certain skippable panels, and they have nothing but that to worry about skipping. Anyways, it turns out that one of the civilians he saved was Techno, a genius engineer and canary girl, who's asked to her shock to build a bomb to destroy chemical plant zone. Does he not know there's people living there? And she doesn't say anything. Instead, we just cut away to comic space being wasted on Eggman's generic worthless dialogue. Oh, apparently Grimer created Metamorphia. I guess I wasn't paying enough attention last time we saw her, where it was clearly stated that he was the one who created her. So, Grimer is Metamorphia's father, not Eggman, thankfully. And she's an artificial life form. He's a shapeshifter. I mean, I used to think she was a really magical being from the Grim Zone, which would have justified her being from there and having shapeshifter powers like a mythological being like a Kitsune. But whatever, she really is a ripoff of Eve. 
She even wants Eggman to love her best, just like Adam did. And Adam is a sibling of Eve. The first story is by Lou Stringer, and it's about an ultimate trooper Brutus being made with Eggman's brain. Yeah, that's not gonna backfire on Eggman at all. And all that happens in the story is that he goes to threaten the Pleasant Zone to try to kill Sonic, who he looks too tough for. The next story is by Nigel Kitching, and as the problem being solved as the Dark Orb controlling the Dark One is thrown into the nothingness, and the Dark One goes after it and disappears with it. This fortunately reverses the spell on the two Enchanter Kings, rather than making it impossible for it to ever be reversed since the only one who could do it died. Maybe the nothingness makes it so that the thing dropping into it never even existed. Lou Stringer wrote the last story, which was about Shortview saving some civilians from being put in badniks, and one of them is a genius named Techno, a charming canary girl who's asked to blow up chemical plant zone by a supposed good guy, and we don't see her saying no right away. She doesn't even say they should evacuate the people there first. Why would they cut away from that? And Shortview is supporting this. And the story ends with Metamorphia being sent after Sonic again, and I finally realized that Grimer made her, which made her shapeshifting feel less justified than her just being a magical, mystical wizard from the Grim Zone. And it makes her less original as now her wanting Eggman to love her best isn't that different from Adam wanting that, albeit a different sort of love. And Eve was a shapeshifting AI girl too.